Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as a 4 kids at 147. Happy 11th of June, everybody. Um, so first things first, let's see where the app takes us today. Are we staying connected or are we going to a square on its own? Let's have a look. Today is number 17. Oh, we do have a square on its own, sort of. So we're going here. Um, in that case, I am going to use my clips. Just grab them because, of course, they're not near me. Because that would be too easy. So let's pop a couple of clips on there so that number 17's in a nice little spot. Oh, we've got some pretty blue in there. I think I'm going to move this number 18 over because we do sort of have a line going on down here at the moment. Even if it is a little bit befuddled. See if I can get most of the square covered up. That top one seems to have done pretty well at lining up. 16 is halfway over two squares. So let's move that over a little bit. There we go. So we have our square for today. Good start. Um, today's pen, this one was gifted to me. So this is a rainbow pen and this was gifted to me by Stacy. So thank you Stacy. It was gifted to me quite a while ago, but I still have it. It's still here. I think I'm going to see how it goes diamond painting like I normally do, sort of from the bottom corner. Or well, this is this is an option I like to choose. But if I do find that I've got too many random little bits about, then I will make sure to sort of fill those little bits in before I carry on. Now, one thing I do need to sort of go back on from a previous whip and chat, go back to is somebody did ask me in relation to whether I had purchased any quad cubes, I think was the word they used, um, for use in diamond painting. And I was a little bit confused as to what they are. It's since been clarified to me. So they are AB diamonds, but rather than them taking being the same size as a normal diamond and taking the space of a square, they take the space of four squares. So they give like an extra block of dimension. I like the idea of those. That gets my brain ticking a little bit on different ways to incorporate A, Bs into paintings and how we could potentially make things work. So I think I may have to explore those a little bit more and see whether there's something that I can make work in a painting to showcase them the best. So thank you for sending me the picture Margaret made a lot more sense when I could see a picture. Somebody else has also asked me if I can sort of show a lot of diamonds in the tray and then being poured into the spout so they can see how it works, which is why I'm still zoomed out and haven't yet zoomed in on the painting so that they can see how it works a little bit better. I'm not sure if this many diamonds is a lot of diamonds or whether it's 
not quite enough for what you were thinking. I know if I do have a very big section or a section on a diamond painting where I'm going to be placing a lot of diamonds, so for example the letter J, I will quite possibly pull more diamonds in than this, but by the time it comes to me tipping any out, I will have a lot less because I tip loads in, and you'll see when I do the J, I tip loads in and I get them all to lay flat sort of on one side of the tray and let them pile up on the other side because I like to work on the side of the tray closest to the painting. And if I don't have too many diamonds to place, you know, I don't tend to tip more diamonds in as I go through. So I'll tip a load in and then when it gets to the point that I've used them in this half of the tray, I'll shake them again by tipping the stack further down and then tipping it back again. And I'll keep doing that. And then when the diamonds get to the point where maybe they're all laid out, but I've cleared this side, I'll actually turn the whole tray around and I'll work from the opposite side so it's still closest to the painting. But hopefully that will sort of show you that that was not a full full tray but quite a full tray and so far at the moment they are all in the spout. And then I'll open the tub and if I push that back a little bit I'll hold it over the tub before I then take the stopper out and then they'll all fall in and I do my best not to put the stopper down because that's when I can get in trouble. If I put the stopper down and forget to put it back in, I don't remember when it comes to actually going to use the diamonds. So I'm going to do it with even more this time. So I've tipped out all the ends and as you can see, I tend to shake it so that they lay flat. And then I tend to tip all the surplus to the side and I'll work from the side closest to the painting. Now I normally only do this if I have a big space to do. I won't normally tip all the diamonds out when I know I've only got a scattering. But that's just because I figure if you're tipping them out, you're gonna eventually have to tip them back in. And quite often I will tip more into the tray than what I need, but not too much more just to save messing about later. But for the purposes of showing this, and hopefully it will show it enough. I know I'm not super zoomed in, but it's trying to make sure that there's enough room to show it getting tipped back into the tub as well. Nearly got all the M's, there's another one, missed one. So that's all the M's back in. And now if I go to tip them back, so because there is too many to go in the spout, they will sort of line up waiting. You can occasionally drop one if you hit it too hard, but it is really, really deep before it does that. And as I say, normally I wouldn't have this many diamonds. And then I can just keep tapping them until they're all gone. And if in doubt, give it a little shake and see if you hear anything. <laughs> Hopefully that sort of shows you what you were wanting to see to the person that asked. But normally I'll just tip that sort of amount out. It's still more than I'll need for this letter R because I don't want to be refilling it all the time. I don't want to be putting in too small an amount but at the same point, I do prefer it if they all go into the spout to be tipped into the pot because they're tucked out the way then. It's easier to then tip it in. That's the way I sort of see it anyway. So I'm just gonna get this letter done and then I will zoom in so that you can all see a little bit better when I stop throwing diamonds places that aren't the canvas. 
it's got a few more of this one it's just dotted here and there and I've just picked up two because I've just the wax in this pen is quite fresh okay all the R's are done and normally for that sort of amount you can't even see them in the spout so it's well and truly tucked away and then for the next one let's do the I this is an AB one now it is true that the AB's can sort of leave a little bit of a coating on your wax it doesn't necessarily pull it off the diamond but it can coat your wax and mean that you have to refill a lot more than you would due to the fact that the AB has left like a, a little bit of a film on the wax and I think that's what's caused me to have to refill my wax more than usual. Sometimes what I do use is the likes of wax pens that you can get, or pencils, sorry. Or you can get pens that have just a little wax tape on the end. In fact, do I have one here? I'm pretty sure I have. There it is. So one of these... One of these pens with a very, very fine tip there, but this is the tip. It's like a full on ball of wax. <laughs> the whole the whole tip, tip is a piece of wax. This is very similar to what the pretty places are as well. And I do have one of those. It's just in my little cart that I keep all my diamond painting staples in. Oh, I've just picked up two. The only thing with these is you can't push too hard. If you push down too hard, it will misshape the wax. So I sometimes find that I do have to use the other side if I need to nudge it into a different place. But they're really good to use for ABs. I don't know whether the wax is stickier or whether it's just more resistant to the AB coating but I find that it it means that you can leave your wax pen for the wax that you need. So I'm just going to tip those back in and get out my letter H. Now for those of you that are watching the video rather than just listening you may have noticed that I'm currently using a different coloured tray. And that is because the first limited edition colour tray, which in this case is purple, has finished printing. And we have scheduled it to go available on the website at the same time as this video going up. Now it is very limited edition in relation to how many we have. That is a set amount. We won't be printing any more for the foreseeable future. And I say the foreseeable future, it's not that we will never do purple again, but we have quite a few requests for limited edition colors if you've heard past whip and chats and people's comments on the colours they want to see and we want to get through all of those before we duplicate any colours. So the purple is available as this video has gone up but I don't know how long it's going to last. So if you do really really want one you need to be quick. But yeah, it's exciting to be using a different coloured tray. The, the filament for this tray we have had in for quite a while. We just, it has taken us quite a while to be able to um, get it printed. And in turn, we've actually had to pause printing on this colour a few times 
to make sure that we meet orders that have come in for our standard colours. And that wasn't H. That's where it needs to go. This is where poured glue can really help when you miss where it's supposed to go. Try and make sure I get that in shot. I'm quite zoomed in today. Um, but yeah, we, we were hoping that we would be able to get this colour tray finished in the month of June. We weren't sure at one point, but we have, we have managed it. So they're up. Okay, enough tray talk, though I haven't yet determined what the comments are, but in, enough tray talk for now. Uh, and let's get to your comments, questions, things like that on my previous whip and chat videos. Keeps me full of topics of conversations and I actually learn stuff like the quad cubes for diamond painting that then makes me have all sorts of ideas going off in my head and nowhere near enough time to implement any of them but I might get there soon enough. I can but try. So Sherry has asked, is your family near the new dinosaur? And this one confused me because I'm thinking, is that near where I live with me and the kids? Or is that something else? I actually had to Google it. I don't know whether I missed it hitting the news here in the UK or whether it didn't. But I did Google it. And a couple of days ago, it was announced that scientists in Australia have classified a new species of dinosaur. So that was quite interesting to find out. It was discovered in 2007 and it's the largest ever found on that continent and it was discovered on a farm in southwest Queensland. So armed with that information, I am actually able to answer Sherry's question um, that is nowhere near where my family are in Australia. New South Wales is a different state and they live in South Victoria. But very interesting, I do like, I do like learning new things. Um, so Stacy has said, what size is your tabletop easel? And don't you get tired of holding the tray after a while? She has her tray sitting right by the section she's working on, so she doesn't have to move her arm as much. So a little bit similar to the fact I do move my tray about, and I do try and keep it quite close. So tray to diamond, or diamond from tray to painting, is, you know, short-ish distance, because it does save your arms. I don't tend to find that my arm aches from holding the tray at all. It's really light. It's an extremely light tray. And I do rest it against the painting. So, it's, you know what, something's always easier when it's resting. Even yourself standing up, it's easier to lean against something. You're still standing up but it's, it's not as, it doesn't feel as much weight when you're leaning against something. And it's very similar with holding the tray. I don't find that it bothers me. You can get sticky mats. In fact, I do have one, but I think Megan's pinched it. Um, I do have a sticky mat that I was gifted. I also have one of those little in car dash mounts that you can get to put your phone on. You can use those to put your tray on while you're working, but I find that holding it really doesn't bother me at all. So the tray is quite light. It means I can move it around the painting to get a little bit closer so I can move it over. And I find I do a lot more moving when I'm not doing a whip and chat just because of the way I'm sat or stood on a whip and chat. 
I don't move it as much as I do when I'm sat on the couch but I do definitely move it about um, but she's she's found if it it's too far for a while her shoulder starts to hurt from the back and forward and I get that I think that's why I hold it over everything but I'm still resting if the tray's not resting my arm holding the tray is resting Um, Joanne has said, what are you thinking of doing with your large heaven and earth design when it's finished? She's had a quote for framing hers and it was scary. I can imagine it was scary. It is over two metres long. And why it, while it may be about half a metre wide or 50 centimetres wide, Two and a half metres long is a big frame. Even my blossom tree, which was a third of the size of that, would have cost quite a bit for me to get it framed or purchase a frame. I think I'm going to use the sort of stretcher bar clips for mine, you know, where you can get two pieces of wood that clip to the top of the diamond painting and then you can get two pieces of wood that clip to the bottom that keep it straight. I think that's what I'm going to do with mine. I'm just not sure if I can find, I don't know if my walls are tall enough in the house for it. I'll have to find out once it's done. It'll probably be something that if I can find a spot for it in my craft room, then that's where it will go when slash if at the moment I get to the end of it <laughs> because it has been going on for a while but yeah I, I think that's the only practical way that that I could do it unless I had you know unless I was doing it for some particular dramatic effect if I had a house that had you know maybe a really tall landing not so much landing more in the stairwell stairwell a nice big dramatic space then I could possibly warrant paying for a frame because it's a high traffic area I wouldn't want it to get knocked but you could see you know it would it would be shown off to its full potential then I might decide it was a worthy investment and treat it as a piece of art all in itself even though of course all of our paintings are art <laughs> you know you can pay that much for a painting that's been done by somebody else so why not treat yourself the same way you would treat another artist but I think for mine it's going to be those clip bars when I'm done when I get nearly finished, I will be able to look into it in a bit more detail. But that's my initial thought. I have seen recently that a couple of people, at least one person has, I'm not sure if it was Stacy or not, um, has finished the Heaven and Earth design that I'm doing. And I know somebody did finish it a while back as well. Absolute troopers, the pair of them for getting it finished anybody that's got that one finished has, has shown it proper dedication um, and it is an absolutely gorgeous painting but it is not for the faint-hearted it's a very very big painting to start with um, so oh sorry not Stacy Joanne <laughs> I'm not sure if it was Joanne that had finished hers or not but Stacy was the question before but yeah I think those bars are going to be the best option for me and the most. I can't believe I must have been talking for 24 minutes already I've only got through three questions then again I did talk a lot before I even got to the questions so maybe that's why also when I'm doing sort of the smaller confetti little bits I don't think I've got, you know, 
nearly halfway through or, or close to halfway through. But as soon as it gets to the point of me doing just one colour, I'm sure I will speed through some of it a lot quicker. Now I have decided, rather than following the pattern across the bottom, to dip to this Y to finish up the sort of dark ones that go into all the branches because it is those that I tend to miss if I don't do them all at the same time. Uh, Teresa New, would you do a duck egg blue tray? She's actually got a couple of questions, but that's the first one. Yes, we do have, well, we do have a pale blue that we have in to do at the moment. Um, we will probably do a few different varieties of blue over time. And we'll just, we'll just work our way through all the colour suggestions as soon as we can. We also need to, well, I also need to realise with all these colours that I am itching to do. I need to go back to that for pen. I'm working on an AB and I think it's a lot easier with these wax pens, or at least it is when they sit in the right place. <coughs> um, yeah, I do need to remember that production might actually slow down a little bit when I have to go back to the office. Because at the moment I can take two minutes to take the tray off the bed of the 3D printer until it's print another. But I might need to find a 3D printer sitter that's at home when, when I'm back in the office. But for now we will keep, keep printing and bring you new colours as soon as we as soon as we can. As soon as it's practical too, we will do it. And we'll just keep working through all your suggestions. Uh, she also says, would you do a framing video, please? Um, so, yeah, I do have quite a few framing videos that are already up. Any time that I do frame one, I do try and make sure that I put it on camera so that you guys can see how I do it. Oh, that's the wrong E. That's a good job I double checked that. Though I do need one up here, but only one. It doesn't want to stick to my pen, so I'm just gonna use my fingers to take it out and then I'm gonna get the correct E for down here. It's the only thing when they do two, I end up picking up the wrong one. Can I get it to pick one of these up or have my ABs ruined my wax forever? Well, maybe not forever, but definitely until I fill it back up again. Let's see if I can just get these three out. And I don't know why I keep struggling when I could just fill up my wax now. Let's do the sensible thing. Refill up my wax now, why AB coating has mucked it up a little bit and then try and pick these up and they should be a lot easier. Oh, to make my life simpler. Um, so back to, ter back to Teresa's question. I do have quite a lot of framing videos already. I have a few different ways that I frame and or mount. You can search on YouTube for framing, but it may not bring them all up, depending on what words I've used. The easiest way to find my framing and mounting videos is actually on my website. It does link back to YouTube, but it's an easier visual guide of things like framing <coughs> that I, I still do plenty of videos on, but I, you know, I may not do as many as I do kitting ups or unboxings, for example. So if you go to 4 kids at 147com click on videos, 
and then there's loads of different sections in there. One of them is called framing and mounting. You may need to scroll down a little bit for it, I'm not sure how far down it is. There's, a, there's quite a few different sections in there. There's my heaven and earth designs. There's apps I use while diamond painting. There's my spare storage. There's just, there's all sorts. There's my comparison canvases on different sizes and all that and there's tips and tricks and beginner's guides. See, I keep remembering the categories. <laughs> there is. There is loads of different categories, but there are loads of framing videos in there and any canvases that I do finish that need to be framed. I will, of course, make sure that I film it and put those videos up for you as well. As and when. I do want to do some with the hanging bars that I was talking about for the Heaven and Earth designs. I do want to try some of them. I think I have another type of frame as well that I want to try. I'll have to have a look at what else I've got that's a little bit different to how I've done them already and try and schedule those videos in and find paintings that they'll work with. And she says, what do you do with paintings you don't hang in your house? How do you store them? So how I store them tends to be a little bit different depending on the size. So in those videos, there is one on how I store them in a display folder. So I do have an A3 binder or display pocket pouch book thing, <laughs> display book. And that tends to house all my paintings that are up to 30 by 40 that don't get hung. I do put those onto black card and I put them in my display folder. I actually have three. I have one that is portrait and full. And then I have a second one that is portrait. And then I have another one that's landscape. And the reason I keep them separate is just so you don't have to keep turning the books around to fully see the pictures. I do also have a bigger, I think it's A1 artists folder. Just one of those flat, um, made of plastic or you can get posh ones that are made of leather. And that has paintings that will still go flat. I think it goes up to about 50 by 60. I think, don't hold me to that though, it might be 40 by 60. Any paintings that are that sort of size go in that folder under my couch because that's the easiest place to tuck it. I did used to have it stood up, but I found it doesn't hold the paintings as well. They can, if they are left there for quite a while, they can just sag just a little bit. So I I store them flat under a bed or something works well as well for them. Unless, like my house, you, under your bed is full of stuff anyway. And then anything bigger than that, I tend to just roll up. Very similar to the way you do roll up a canvas when you haven't yet worked on it. The only difference is when I have worked on it is I make sure that the diamonds are facing out and not in. So if they're facing inwards, then they have a chance of popping off. Outwards, not so much. You can also get some like poster tubes, either ones that you can use to post stuff in the mail, or you can get posher ones from craft stores. If you want to fully enclose a painting, that can be a good way to store some completed ones. I do also have some that are back in the box they came in, but completed. Back in the box or the tube they came in, completed and rolled outwards. There's a few different ways um, that, that may suit you. 
Okay, so Linda said when she first started painting, she did have a pain in her index finger. This is going back to a question that I did have up the other day. I am on questions from the 8th of June, so it will have been on the 8th of June's video. And she found it was due to the plastic pen that came with the kit. It was too small, so she was holding it too tight. Um, she got a pen that was a lot more comfortable to hold and taught herself not to grip it as tightly. That is what I thought it might be. It's something that you, you're trying to squeeze onto too much that could cause a pain in your index finger. Um, Oh, so Fee has come back and said, apologies for calling them quad cubes, as another diamond painter called them that. Uh, yeah, thank you for clarifying, Fee. Margaret did send me a picture of them. Your description prob probably would have got it, I probably would have got it from your description, which is that it's the square ABs that fit four squares, the space of four squares depending on how tired I was for the picture meant I definitely got it. Uh, she says she's also another vote for mint trays. We do have a pale green that is in the queue to print alongside a pale blue. All other colours asked for after that will follow as and when we can. Somebody has said that they would also love if the trays would just be a little taller on the sides because they tend to shake a little bit more than they need to. I'm not sure if that's something we can do. It's, it's another one that's not going to be a never. But the sides, if we even adding a little bit more to the sides could increase the print time by quite a bit. And they're quite a nice proportion at the moment. We may see in the future if we can get a lid to work. That may help if, if you tend to shake them a little bit too hard. But I find if you get hold of the tray and hold it here, you can often shake it, you know, a little bit less. And then they won't tend to spill out. So, Teresa says she has a question. I like questions. How do you store your extra drills that don't have a DMC number? Hmm. I must say, um, companies do seem to be, from what I can see, seem to be getting a lot better at including the DMC numbers. I have noticed that in my last few recent lots of unboxings, more have got DMC numbers than haven't. But there are still diamond paintings that don't have DMC numbers. Quite often, I throw them in a little pot. I keep them in their bags, so I do keep them separate. But I do have a Ikea long plant pot and I can fit two of them on a shelf in my Calax. Um, I actually have a, a secondary shelf in my Calax that divides my cube into two so I could get four of these plant pots on it. I throw them in there primarily. I do have a couple of videos where I did sort some of them out and for one of them, I took all the non-DMC numbers that I had in my pot. And when I was de-kitting a painting with DMC numbers, I went through and compared the colours. And if any matched what I was going to be de-kitting from that painting, then I put those diamonds with it because the colours matched, so therefore it gave it a number. For another video, I went through with a DMC chart 
a DMC diamond chart that I got off AliExpress and I was de-kitting a painting that had no DMC numbers and I matched them all up to the chart and popped them away in the DMC colour that it matched the best to. That's another set of two videos that you can find easiest on my website. I do have a section called no DMC number question mark and in there is those two videos so you can see what I did. Some people give them give them away, give them to schools, art centres, you know, things like that, places that do crafts. Some people throw the non-DMC number ones just into a pot, not in bags, so just throw them in a pot a bit like sand art to make something pretty. And then of course some people do match them up. It's completely up to you what works for you but I am glad that companies seem to be getting better at making sure that paintings have DMC numbers. I think it's become such a thing at the moment that yeah companies are listening and they are starting to put them on more so than not which always helps us when it comes to de-kitting our spares. I actually had to go into my spares the other day for the first time in ages to get a colour that I had run out of on one of my custom paintings, which I'm sure I will mention when I de-kit it, how I had to actually go and fish out my spares to be able to finish it. But it proves to me why it is that I keep the spares in the first place, as well as my fun other projects like my heaven and earth designs and anything else that I can find the time to do using up any of the spare diamonds that I have. Uh, Shimmy Dancer says thank you for doing these waffles, she looks forward to them, that's good to know. Thank you for that, that keeps me going. We're on the 11th of June and I have quite a few more days to go and there are quite a few evenings that I could quite happily stay sat on the couch and not move so your comments and questions do help to keep me going I think if I had to think of a topic of conversation for each and every video that I was doing I think it would, it would take a lot more for me to move off that couch after a busy work day. But yeah, it is, it is appreciated that, that people are, are getting something from, from the waffles. <coughs> so Eric has asked, when you go look for a new time and painting, is there a specific artist or style you look for? I don't... I don't think so. I mean, you guys that watch the unboxing videos may say that I have a particular style that I go for. And in some ways I do. There are some paintings that I look at and I'm like, mm, nah, that's never going to be me. I don't know whether I have a particular style though. I do get attracted to the brightly coloured ones. And that's because I have realised that when I am diamond painting, when I am doing a painting that has bright colours, I, I really enjoy doing it. So I actually consciously look sometimes for the bright colours because they're so much fun to me. But I do quite often, I get drawn into the simple looking pictures, the pictures that I could see displayed in my home. And they quite often can have a solid white or a solid black background. I don't know why I do it to myself sometimes and get drawn into those, but I do. Um, th there's nothing that I'm specifically looking for when I'm looking. I think it's just they are the type that I'm drawn to. So I'm trying to use this pen currently to 
get these couple of ABs because for this painting all the single squares of white or just two on their own I am doing with my very limited amount of leftover spare white ABs <coughs> but then for the bigger section I'm using the glow in the dark but first up I'm going to do the L's and then I do have an O as well that needs doing. L's and an O. Get those done first. So these are just, L is actually a grey. It looks like it's a blue. Every time I think I'm looking for a blue. Maybe it's just because there is so much blue in this painting. But it's actually a grey. Sherry has said she actually burst out laughing at my comment saying I don't need that drama. Yeah. I think that's something that I've I've come to learn. The whole wise person wisdom and all that sort of stuff. Nah. It just it just comes to the point. I think you reach a point in your life. At some point, and some people do it much earlier than others, so it's not always an age thing. And some people, it is just their personality through and through. But there is just sometimes when you like, there's some stuff you just have to let go. You just have to say no to. And yeah, I don't need that drama. It's... It's, it's just the way it's displayed. Um, so Shelley, also she said, listening to me talk about making the videos. So this again was the 8th of June. Somebody did ask me about making YouTube videos and starting your own channel and all that sort of stuff. And she did say she thinks she's going to stop making YouTube videos because they don't bring enjoyment to her and that is a hard decision to make Shelley if it's something that you've started and you know even if you thought you wanted to do it and you started doing it sometimes it can be a very hard thing to stop even if you're not enjoying it so she did say they actually bring her anxiety. So well done to you, Shelley, listening to yourself, working out what is right for you. You will find what works for you, well and truly. She said she's still going to make her one minute TikTok videos because, but the longer videos are bringing enjoyment to you, to her. Perfect. If you like the TikTok videos, do it. Do it and go for what you enjoy. Because at the end of the day, if, if Shelley kept doing the longer videos and not enjoying it, soon enough she wouldn't enjoy the TikTok either. And if at the moment you enjoy the one minute TikTok videos, then keep going. Ditch, ditch the parts that you don't enjoy and keep the parts that you do because, you know, you've, you've got to do that sometimes and you've got to realise that not everything works for everybody. So, well done, Shelley. I bet that was a really hard decision, but if it's giving you anxiety, then don't. Whereas if you waffle to a camera for hours like I do, <laughs> then maybe it's right for you but TikTok is not right for me so you have TikTok Shelley <laughs> I'll stick I'll stick to what I know and stay away from TikTok because <laughs> I don't know enough right so we have another square done it's not connected but it is well it wasn't well out of the way we'll see what tomorrow brings for the next one but I hope you've enjoyed today's whip and waffle um, and our purple
tray. This one is branded for kids. Yeah, and I thank you all so much for watching, as always, and I'll speak to you all again tomorrow.